Hey everyone, this is a tutorial that I wish no one would ever have to use, but occasionally problems happen on student films and mistakes get made, so it's here if you need it. This is walking through the process of dealing with footage that was accidentally shot in slow motion while you were on set. So maybe you're shooting on, let's say, a Sony FS7 and somebody accidentally hit the S and Q button, and now you're stuck with footage that's in slow motion, but you need to sync up audio with it and edit with it at normal speed because it's not supposed to be at slow motion. So this is the way that you would deal with that in Premiere. There's a corresponding Avid tutorial available as well if you're cutting in that. I'll note that this is a scenario where if you happen to be somebody who was editing software ambivalent, so you're happy either in Avid or Premiere, and you have a bunch of footage that was shot at the wrong frame rate, I might choose Premiere in that case. The workflow here is a little bit simpler than the Avid one, although you can work with it in either piece of software. So let's take a look at this. I did not happen to have on hand any footage that had accidentally been shot at the wrong rate. So I'm just gonna work with some footage that was shot normally and we'll pretend it was shot slow motion and that we need to speed it up and instead what you'll see is it'll look like it's been sped up, but the process is the same. So I'm gonna bring all my footage into Premiere normally as I would. So here's a couple of clips and a couple of pieces of audio. And you can see my frame rate here is 23,976, which is our normal sort of cinema look frame rate. And let's pretend that this stuff was shot at significantly more frames per second so we would have to slow it down. So first thing I'm going to do is just select which clips are in slow motion and I'm going to need to speed them up. If it's all of them, then this is simple. If it's one of them, this is simple. If I have kind of a mix, like maybe some shots were in slow motion and some shots were shot correctly, hopefully if this was something that was accidentally done on set, like somebody accidentally hit the button once and there's maybe a series of shots that were accidentally in slow motion and then somebody realized it and turned the button off and then the rest of them aren't, so they would at least numerically be in sequence, so it should be relatively easy to find which ones. But in this case, let's say hypothetically that both these shots had been accidentally done in slow motion. So what I'm going to do is select all of those that are in slow motion and I'm not going to select any of the ones that were recorded at the correct speed. I'm going to right click and go to this option for speed duration and I'm going to change my speed here to what I need it to be to correspond to the correct frame rate. So in this case if I was shooting at 60 and I want to play back at 24, actually be 23,976 and 5994, but let's just work with 24 and 60 because that's easier. The speed factor for that would be 250%. If I had accidentally shot at 48 and wanted to play back at 24, then I would do 200%. If I had done it at 30 and wanted to play back at 24, that'd be 125%. Those are sort of your most common ones. If it was some other weird number, you'd have to do the math and figure out how it would come out. So I'm just gonna tell Premiere when I work with these clips, I wanna play them back at 250% speed. And you'll see that in fact does happen. So if they hit play here, you can see everything's playing in fast motion. From here, once I've done that, I'm just going to work with these clips normally. So in terms of syncing, I'm going to do exactly what I normally would, which would be find that moment where the clapper hits. I'm going to mark my in point. I'll load up the audio for that shot. And mark my in point there. You can see that's got one over. There's my in point. Now in this case, when I sync these up, they're not actually going to sync correctly because again, my footage was not actually shot in slow motion, so I'm speeding up the footage and not the audio, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so I've got an in point set for this, an in point set for this. I'm gonna highlight them, do merge clips. And I'll just say this is merged and sped up, just so I know what it is. And now if I open up this clip, you can see it's playing it sped up and it's got that audio in there. And you'll notice they now said action well after we saw the video start going because again, the video is playing faster than the audio was in this case. And then I can just edit with these clips normally. Now, one thing I do want to note, go back and I'm going to change this clip back to normal. My editing process here can work perfectly normally, except for one glitch, at least in this version of Premiere. Let's say I wanted to use this part of a clip and I set my in and out points and that works fine and I throw it in a sequence. This clip that I have sped up is not gonna quite work the same way. So I'm trying to hit an in point right now and it's not gonna work. It will let me set an out point, but 
whatever I do, I can't set an endpoint over here in my source window. So what I have to do is kind of take a chunk of that clip that's always going to start at the beginning of the clip, which in this case, since I told it to sync with the endpoints, is going to just start at that endpoint where the slate hit. So it's not the entire original clip, it's the part that I synced up. But once I've got it in here, now I can work with it normally. So if I just wanted a later part of this, I can trim off the beginning, I can trim the end, I can use my razor blade tool and cut this into pieces if I need to. So all my normal tools are going to work here once I've got it in. It's just with these sped up clips, it doesn't let you set an endpoint while you're in the source window over here. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I've got my sequence together here. And let me just throw a piece of like one other clip in here so we can confirm that this works. And let's grab a little piece of a different bit of audio. Okay, so let's say this was my sequence. And you'll notice, other than the fact that I couldn't set my in and out points, I'm just working with this normally and it works fine. If I'm going into Resolve for my color grading, I can do that just like I normally would and it works perfectly fine. So I'll go here and say I want to export a Final Cut Pro XML. And now let's go over to Resolve and just kind of show you how this would come in. Okay, so I'm now in Resolve in just a new project. And I'm going to go File, Import Timeline, and Import AF, EDL, or XML. And I'm just going to find that XML that I spit out of Premiere. And I don't need to change any of these things unless I wanted to for some reason. And you'll see my sequence comes in. It looks just like this one did. I have these four video clips and then all this audio. And actually, it's already correctly sped up the clips that were supposed to be sped up here. So if I play this, you can see that that's playing sped up. And actually, if I right click on one of these and go to the clip speed, you can see it's playing it at close to 250%. If I wanted to actually change it precisely, I could. And that's one of those just sort of weird little glitches that it didn't come in quite at 250%. And I do want to point out that kind of our penalty for not shooting the footage the right way is we will have little weird things like that that can happen in the edit. So if I go back to my original sequence here, you know, and let's look at the time code for this clip. This is 01 32 32 11. And over here, it's going to start one frame off of that, 32, 32, 12. And then as I step through, you'll see the numbers are jumping because it's literally skipping over frames because I told it to play this in fast motion. So we went 12, 14, 17 over here in the frames. And here we went 11, 14, 16, 19, 19, that one sinks. So it's playing the right portion of the clip. It's starting roughly where we wanted it to, you know, within a frame of it and ending where we wanted it to within a frame of that. So here I ended at 32.35.07, here it's 32.35.08. So it's getting the right piece of clip, it's just worth noting that it's not going to be exactly frame accurate. So if there was some weird thing, you know, like a flash of lightning or something that showed up in my Premiere edit in the middle of a shot, it's possible that that may not show up here in Resolve because when I'm playing with doing these speed remappings, each software is going to interpret that a little bit differently and might pick different frames to keep or drop, even though overall they're going to end up playing the same number of frames per second out of the same chunk of footage. So that's just one potential minor glitch. Most of the time, not a huge deal here when we're dealing with the clips and the stuff sped up. It'll still look fine, but just something to keep your eye out for that it is possible you might end up with things that are like a frame off of where you wanted them to be or a particular frame that you really wanted to show up doesn't. So keep your eyes out for that. And again, that's just one of the penalties for the fact that we didn't shoot our footage the right way as we end up with potentially little headaches in post that we got to watch out for. Otherwise, you can see this workflow works fine and is pretty straightforward. Really, the only thing we had to do that was different than what we would normally do is just before we started doing our syncing, I need to go in and adjust the speed on these clips to make sure they're playing at the faster speed to compensate for being shot in slow motion and kind of bring them back to normal speed. 
Other than that, everything works exactly the way that we normally would in Premiere. So hope that's helpful for you. Good luck.